Let's talk about source transforms and resistor simplifications, which we'll need to cover for our first method. So let's begin with resistor simplifications. People usually have no trouble identifying whether resistors are in parallel or in series if they're drawn in this simple way. But they have trouble with more complicated circuits. And the idea behind determining in a complicated circuit if resistors are in series or parallel is for parallel, it's actually fairly simple. It's are the voltages guaranteed to be equal between the two? So the voltage on the top has got to be the same as the voltage on the bottom resistor because they're connected at the top and bottom. So that suggests an alternative way of finding if the resistors are in parallel, which means are both sides connected. So for this particular example, do we have a connection on not just the right side, but also on the left side? And if we don't have a connection on both sides, they are not in parallel, and if we do, they are. Series is perhaps even simpler. It has just a single rule, which is are the currents the same? If they are, if all the current that goes through the first one is guaranteed to go through the second, then they're in series. If that's not true, then they're not. Now notice for both of these simplifications that we could draw a box around them. And this box has just the two resistors that we're simplifying. Often students try to simplify resistors that can't be simplified and they wouldn't if they could just realize they can't draw a box around the resistors they're trying to simplify and just have two wires coming out of the box. So as an example of this, what I mean is that if you've got a circuit like this, and you're asked to simplify, let's say we've got a, let's say it's a segment of a circuit and it's moving out it's got more stuff on the left that we can't see, and it's got more stuff on the right that we can't see, and we're asked to simplify this. You cannot simplify any of these resistors because you can't, from these above rules, we can't guarantee that any of the voltages are equal or that the currents are equal. We can't draw a box around any two resistors and just have two wires if we say, hey, are these guys in series? No, because you've got one, two, three, wires exiting that, exiting that construct. And there's no rule for simplifying things with three wires coming out of it. And you're not allowed to just ignore a wire coming out of, out of a box. So the answer is no. And similarly, we can't say that this resistor is in parallel with this resistor, because if we try to draw a box around here, again, we've now we've got four wires coming out of it. We can't do that. Okay. So those are the rules for determining if resistors are in series or in parallel. Let me give a, a very quick example. So the question is, can we simplify this? And the answer is yes. We can draw a circle around these two wires, and we can see that all the current into the first has to be the same as the second, so those two are in series. We can draw a circle around uh, shape around these three. And again, we've only got two wires exiting our shape. The current through the first has to be the same as the current through the second has to be the same as the current through the third. So those are also in series. So that tells us that we could simplify the two on the left to one and the two on the bottom to one. So now we've got this shape. Now we can see that the voltages across these two are the same. And someone might say, well, wait a second, we can't draw a circle around them and have only two wires exiting. This has three wires exiting. And that's true, but we could tri trivially redraw those two like this. And now, if we had a fine enough line, we could draw a circle around these two. And we've just got two wires exiting our circle, so we're going to simplify that section. And those two resistors inside definitely have the same, are definitely connected on this side and they're also connected on that side. So those are in parallel and they can they change to just one resistor. By the same reasoning, these three resistors are in parallel, 
They're connected all on the same on the left side. They're connected all the same on the right side. We could draw a circle and just be very careful to get it narrow in here. And we just have two wires exiting. So all those three would be in parallel. And now these two that we're left with are in series. And we would be able to simplify this large construct down into the simple resistor. Okay, enough with the resistor simplification. Let's get into the source transforms. Source transforms have two different subtypes. The first, I'll call them the normal ones. Say that if you've got a voltage source in series with a resistor, and although I've drawn the voltage source as a independent source, it could be a dependent source too. We can change a voltage source with a series resistor into a current source with a parallel resistor. And that current source would be V over R. You don't need to memorize that rule, it's just Ohm's law. And similarly in reverse, you can take a current source with a parallel resistor and convert that into a voltage source with a series resistor and just like before, the resistor stays the same, and the only thing that changes is the source. And by Ohm's law, that voltage source would be equal to I times R. Okay, so those are the normal ones. Now let's look at the degenerate ones. The degenerate ones consist of a voltage source with a parallel resistor. No matter what that resistance is, if you were to draw a black box around the output terminal, so you just had the two output terminals exposed, no matter what that resistance is, the output terminals would be V volts difference. In fact, you could put loads on the outside terminals and it would always be V volts difference. So if you wanted to model something that is always V volts difference, the way to model it is with a just a V volt voltage source. So the resistor does nothing to it so you can just get rid of it. Similarly, if you've got a current source that has a series resistor, no matter what value that resistance is, if you put it inside a box, there'd always be I amps flowing out of that box. And so since the resistor doesn't change its properties at all, you can just simply get rid of it and replace it with a single I-valued current source. So here are your four source transforms. You've got your voltage source in series with a resistor that can go back and forth with a current source in parallel with a resistor. And then you've got your two degenerate forms, which are voltage sources with a parallel resistance, in which case the resistance doesn't matter, and a current source with a series resistance, in which case the resistor again doesn't matter. Armed with this, let's start to examine the specific examples of Thevenin and Norton transforms.